All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be an unboxing. And as you can see, this is from C. Reisner Cutlery or TPK, traditional pocket knives. Uh, so this is going to be mainly a Whedon Company knife, which is the first brand for some reason that um, Gilbert Cooper is bringing forward with the new, the old um, Queen Cutlery machines as a new brand. So he purchased the, the machines um, and is using them to make knives. And the first brand that he's bringing forward is this Weed & Co. Which, uh, the purpose of this video is to check out the, the knives. Um, not real sure why that's the way that they decided to do it. I really wanted to do an interview and get the help get the word out about, you know, Gilbert Cooper's upcoming knives. Wasn't able to get in contact, but We'll see what this is like. Austin at Traditional Pocket Knives, I've met several times. Um, he really loves the knives. He really believes in, in American-made knives and, and knives in general. And um, I think he's doing his best to help steer things in the right direction for uh, Gilbert Cooper and his knives. Um, but he got these Weed & Company knives. And so I ordered one from him. Thought about getting several. There was two different versions. There was the one I got here, and then a trapper. But I just got this one. Um, haven't honestly heard the best things about these so far. Um, got the order thing here with a sticker. Always has good stickers at traditional pocket knives, and uh, always good service too. Um, so again, I, I think that you know. Austin is trying to be a, a good part of the uh, knife community, as a lot of dealers do, but you know, kind of continuing a tradition with his grandfather's company at C. Reisner. Um, now, the first thing in here is a t-shirt. Uh, the reason I got a t-shirt, one time uh, Austin actually, I believe he gave me a t-shirt, um, and I really liked it. I got a couple stains on it, and the other thing is that uh, he does free shipping at $100, and the Weed & Company knife was not $100. So I you know, got a t-shirt and then this also, and this is this Cattleman's Cutlery, ABKT, which is something that I wasn't aware of actually until he started carrying them. Uh, and I wanted to try one out so I could do some videos on them. And uh, it's American Buffalo Knife and Tool. Uh, and I said, just, you know, whichever one you think would be best for me to do a video on. So let's take a look at this first here. So it comes in kind of a double box, a sleeve, and then a box has some wrapping. Now this was $15. The shirt was $10. This was $15. And here we go. So this is a jig Dowrin. It's not um, a bone, it's a Dowrin. First of all, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. I, I Honestly, I thought this was gonna be, have some like major issues right out of the box. Now it's certainly possible that Austin, you know, picked through and found the best one he could, but not too bad. I mean, there's some scratches there, but that doesn't matter at all. Not even really any gaps. I'm surprised by that. Maybe some slight gaps here between the bolster and the liner. And honestly, the covers are fitted pretty well too. Yeah, huh. Now I'm assuming that this shield, which is, in my opinion, not a very good looking shield, um, is not pinned. So let's take a look at the action here on the blades. Pretty strong pull on that, surprised by that. Nice snap. Sits actually pretty well within the frame, so um, that's nice. I don't really have a stockman, a medium stockman like this. Um, blade grind, not that great. Look at that there. Uh, and same over here. Not even really sure what the deal is with that. So PRC, so we know that this was made in the People's Republic of China. Um, such a such a silly name. But I don't, you know, shy away from Chinese-made knives. Uh, same deal here. Pretty strong pull. No play. And snaps back in. Same deal. Six or seven, even. Um, not perfect grinds. I think that I can tell that not 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 the best grinds out there for sure. Um, kind of like a rough rider type feel to it. 
I don't know that it's made by the same place that makes Rough Rider, though. It doesn't, for what, I can't even put my finger on why, but it doesn't really give me that, you know, you, you read the knife, not the tang. It doesn't really give me the feel that these are made by Rough Rider, but I could be wrong on that. Um, yeah, I don't know, and here's a, an imperfection there. But honestly, this is $15, the shirt's $10, so what, it was $110 total, so uh, so the, the the knife must have been, the Weed & Co. must have been $85. Um, but for $15, this is definitely not bad. Um, be a great gift knife. So, yeah, Cattleman's Cutlery. Probably put this to use and uh, do a full review at some point just to get, you know, the word out. I haven't seen really anything about those knives on the internet. This is a big tube. So, um, these Weed & Company knives, as you can see, Weed & Co. Pocket knives. Quality knives, lifetime warranty, Winchester, Ohio, handmade, hand sharpened, made in the USA, and this is the 5100 GB, which stands for green bone. I got the green bone one. Made in the USA with domestic and imported materials, which uh, Austin mentioned that. I um, think it would be better to go with all US materials. Uh, but let's open this, let's open this big old thing up here. Maybe. There we go. So, in a bag, in the bag, uh, a lot of people have mentioned that it comes in like a, a, a sandwich bag. Not the best look, um, but I don't care too much about that. So, and here it is. This is a big knife. It's bigger than I realized. Honestly, first impression, like just, just seeing it is pretty good, but let's look at this first. So, what is this? Um, so we've got, <laughs> I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is on the face of the earth, every tree and fruit. So it's to go with the weed and co thing. Now, speaking of that, I'm not going to get into this before anybody, you know, before I even get into the knife. This is a marijuana leaf. Anyone who tells you differently is making things up or trying to appease someone who's anti-marijuana. It's a marijuana leaf. I've seen people say that it's a buckeye leaf, that it's a maple leaf. It's not. That is what a marijuana leaf looks like. It's not what either of those other leaves look like. And it's not really what any other leaf looks like of any significance. This is a marijuana leaf. It's ridiculous to say otherwise. That's why it says this. That's why it's weed and co. It's a marijuana leaf. Are they going to keep that? I don't know. Are they going to keep doing weed and company? I don't have a problem with it. I'm not a user myself but I think people should be able to do what they want as long as they're not hurting other people. Um, but it is a weed or marijuana leaf, and that was confirmed to me by the son of Gilbert Cooper. So it is a marijuana leaf, and I think it's silly that some people are saying it's not. Um, here's a little write-up. There's 375 total for the year 2021, so a pretty small run. Um, only 75 green jig bone, which is a pretty small run. Uh, you would think that they would make the, a lot of the green because it goes with the theme. But that's why I got the green. Actually, I think Austin only had one of the green. Um, and uh, I wanted to make sure I got that. Handmade, hand-pinned, hand-sharpened. 440 stainless steel blades. Now, I actually don't mind 440 stainless steel at all. Um, it's really what, what GEC uses. Sometimes GEC uses 420. But Austin, uh, I believe, convinced them to use 1095 because it's more traditional. So I, I do think the 2022 models, you know, from what I've heard, might be 1095. But, you know, none of that's confirmed. And I, I instead of giving specifics, I just want to say that Austin, I think, is trying to, to steer things in the right direction. I don't have specifics, though. Uh, it's an eighth of an inch thick uh, stainless steel backspring. Um, all blah, 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 limited lifetime warranty. And here's the limited warranty. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the knife. Let's get to it. So this is a large Coke bottle, which is pretty typical. Um, you know, there are a lot of vintage Coke bottles that are very large. One thing that I'm noticing right away, I do like the bone. The bone is a nice color. It's like a light green with darker in the jigging. Um, 
not that bad fitted not perfect you can see some ever so slight gaps here but not not too bad slight gap here um back spring slight gap not not egregious eh, kind of goes the whole way here from about here all the way down to the end so not perfect um there's actually some voids in the spring itself see those little little things right there those are actually voids in the steel of the spring which you know can happen but that's kind of not the best look for the steel of the spring um now you can see it has a long pull with a match strike pattern to it it's very very polished um that's one thing that uh case does a lot of is really like polishing away the the sharp edges um gec does the opposite they leave the sharp edges and i think that it does for me coming from someone as who's a gec enthusiast look a little better i don't like the super super polished edges now you can see that this is not perfectly centered it is not rubbing i don't think but it's pretty darn close. It might be rubbing. Let's open this up. Not the, that strong a pull. Um, maybe a five. About a five. Four point seven five, we'll say. But it's actually pretty snappy. Now, I want to see about blade wrap. It's got a little bit of a sound going going on here. Yep. I'm pretty sure that it has blade wrap. I'm looking inside here to try to see. I don't actually see a spot where it's hitting. Um, it does not look like the shield is pinned, which if you watch my channel, you know I much prefer a pinned shield, but um, doesn't look like that shield is pinned. It is stamped Winchester, Ohio, 2021. Uh, I can't see the blade wrap, but I certainly feel feel like there's blade wrap right there. You can see my, my fingernail catching. Hmm. I don't see it. Maybe it's just a burr. Maybe it's a roll from the blade wrap. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, Weed and Co. on the blade etched. Um, it looks a little weird to me uh, because it's it's more aligned with with this spine edge here than with the actual you know like um, handle to tip uh, vector of the blade. And now that I'm looking, I, I do think that it has some. Blade rub. You can see those scratches there. I don't know though. Where were those scratches? Yeah, yeah, I think that that's blade rub. Um, so this is one of those things where I'll be honest. I I never went in and and did the tour of the Queen factory while it was in operation. I knew that the queen was there. Uh, I saw the building. It looked very old and dilapidated. Um, I had seen GEC, done the tour several times before queen closed down, like three or four times, but I never did it. And I wish I had, because I would have loved to see those machines working away um, as they did for a long, long time. But that said, uh, I don't know. Everything I've seen, I really hate to be negative. I want you know, Gilbert Cooper who, or whoever is trying to bring these vintage brands back to their glory, back to being made in the USA or continue them making in the USA. I want them to have success. I really, really do. I'd love to help, you know, get the word out on them if, if, they're, if they're made well. Uh, but so far, um, when I first knew of Queen being sold, it was kind of, you know, one of some of the brands, Queen uh, and Queen City went to Smoky Mountain Knife Works, some um, unsureness about how it all happened, but uh, Shat and Morgan, the brand, went to Gilbert Cooper and the, the machinery went to Gilbert Cooper. Cooper. 
Um, I tried and tried to get a hold of him uh, through his sons and, and calling and such and, and haven't been able to, you know, talk with him, get any info or try to put an article out, something like that, a video even. Um, so that's, you know, it's no problem. I'm just a just a, <laughs> a guy who likes knives, who, who makes videos and articles on them. No real reason for him to talk to me. But then uh, they put out some pictures of some knives that... I mean, did not look good. They, uh, I'm just gonna be completely frank. The first pictures of knives from, from Gilbert Cooper under Shat and Morgan looked bad in my opinion. I mean, not not good, but bad. The grinds looked really, really poor, wonky, thick. Um, and uh, the handles looked weird. Really, nothing about them looked that good. But, that was out there and then now recently someone um sorry about the clock I, I can't figure out how to turn it off um, um believe me I, I wish that i could uh hopefully it'll stop soon okay um recently a viewer actually posted that these weed and company knives were being made by gilbert cooper and then um I saw it posted some other places. I asked Austin uh, at TPK about it, and now he recently started selling these, and I don't get it. I don't get, Weed & Company is a vintage brand, but they did not, you know, on their vintage knives when they were being made 100 years ago or whatever, use a marijuana leaf. Again, I don't have anything against marijuana or people who use it. Um, I think that people should be able to do what they want as long as they're not hurting other people, but it, it's not, something that I use and it's not something that I think really makes sense with the market for traditional knives. I don't think that there's a huge intersection um, and I don't think even if there was that it would really make sense, you know. Uh, so I'd love to know why they, they went that route but I doubt I'm going to find out because I haven't been able to get a hold of them so far. And I do hope that they bring forward Shatton Morgan knives that are are good. I would say this, honestly, unfortunately, is about the same level of quality as a lot of Shatton Morgan knives were towards the end of Queen's existence in its former existence, because um, they were not making knives at the w level that they really should. Uh, so it's not like this is significantly worse than... Um, than a queen from 2017. In fact, it, it's very possible that it would be better than a lot of queens from 2017. But it's just not what I was hoping to get from, you know, Gilbert Cooper or whoever had the queen uh, machinery and the Shatton Morgan brand. Now, I'm still kind of glad to have this knife because I think it's weird and kind of unique and with 75 of them made, it's a little bit of a collector piece. Um, and I, I really hope that they continue to work on the quality, get rid of some of the issues, you know, get some more finesse in the finishing. I really hope that they pin their shields. But the, the bone is really nice. I don't know if it's made in house or if it's cool pepper or something, but um, yeah. So kind of a long video here, kind of some convoluted thoughts, but it's kind of the way it is with this whole thing. It's convoluted. It's uh, been a long process. I hope it goes well for them. I think that they should probably work on the Shatton Morgan brand more and really focus on getting them to GEC quality levels. I think that that's the way to compete. I don't think a small outfit is going to be able to compete with Case uh, at their quality level, which is much, much lower than GEC, pretty close to this level. Um, so I think that their their route, in my opinion, and I'm, again, just some guy who likes knives, uh, is to try to go for that crowd, the almost boutique, you know, super high quality, low production, but factory made uh, knife market. So this is the Weed & Co. Um, what are they even calling it? Western Hunter or something like that? German, German Hunter pocket knife. Uh, and also the Cattleman's Cutlery. 
medium stockman and jake Doran, and uh also a shirt from traditional pocket knives thanks to austin for being willing to send this to me i purchased this i think it was the only green one that he had uh and always answering my questions um always being willing to answer questions and and i think like i said really trying to uh help help the industry help particularly the traditional knife industry and i hope that that he is able to help these go in the right direction uh, so thank you to him and i uh, hope you've enjoyed watching if you have make sure you give the video a thumbs up you can also subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you know when I post new videos. Check out my social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.